This time on IFAF. I know, falls and firing squad. Stick a straw in it and suck it all day long. Every and time you walk in, you're that meme. Oh, we got a badass over here. It's not a guy skiing from the Christ the King Bummer. Church, but it is a dude skateboarding. I had to hoist myself up like a toddler getting onto a dining room chair. IFAF. Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, we try those crispy cones in mm-hmm. Rexburg we talked about last episode. Awesome. We can't even kill a guy in Idaho. Is that good news or bad news for the Idaho Department of Corrections? We've got a great idea about leap year. And if you're listening to this before or on Wednesday, March 6th, you got to hear about this cool thing that Reed's Dairy is doing. So there's this article from NBC in Montana saying that Mexican drug cartels are going into Montana, Uh referring to it as America's last best place. Montana? I'm sorry. Isn't Idaho America's last best place? I mean, of the two, definitely, I think, because it's got not only the nice landscapes and the country and stuff, but also some actual shopping. Some good people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what what is what is Montana? Like, not have? to crap on Mon- Montana. They're they, fine. Have, they have Glacier National Park and they have Bozeman. I mean, well, yeah. And all those celebs. M- Missoula ain't bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. no. Actually, that's Wyoming. Because well, they go to Jackson mostly. I know a lot of celebs have places in Big Sky. That's true. That's the big uh, ski resort you see if you Mm -hmm. go to Bozeman through West Yellowstone, Montana, and then up. Right. uh, Big Sky is a big one Mm -hmm. for celebs. And I'm just going by by the marijuana law. Right. Yeah. We're the last holdout in the nation. You remember our episode about Cheech and Chong's cruise shoes? Yes, I do. We're the last state in the nation that says, "Eh, eh, eh." in fact. Right. Didn't they try to pass a bill that would make the fine greater for marijuana possession? Uh, okay. If yeah, you, I think I did see that. If you possessed over three ounces of marijuana, um, the fine would be, really, guys, $420. Okay, at that point. It feels like lawmakers are sort of saying, ha ha, we make the rules so we can do what we want because clearly they're in on the joke. Right. But you guys on the bottom, heaven forbid you get to enjoy any of it. Well, or or it's just like, I mean, I can see the uh, the ad slogan <laughs> now for this new law. Mm-hmm. By the way, it failed miserably. Or like burned by their own number. Right. <laughs> Smoked by their own number. Yeah. If you honor 420, <laughs> that's great. That's Thank perfect. You. Yeah. Then that you'll owe 420. Yeah. Why not make it 42069? I mean, at this point, come on. You know, come on. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I think Idaho's America's last nice place, last best place. One of those. Whatever the distinction was. I mean, I, I think there are lots of great places in the US and in the world in general, to be fair. But like, yeah, I think Idaho's pretty dang nice. You yeah. Know? The thing is, I feel like we've got a little bit of something for everyone. You know, if you want something a little more metropolitan, you go to Boise. If you want something that's just right, I think it's Idaho Falls. And if you want something more rural, you go to like uh, Lewiston or something like that, you know? Right. Like we've got we've got a little something for everyone. Salmon. Yeah. And we have all four seasons, which I personally like. Boy, we sure did last week. <laughs> it, we, last episode we talked about, is this fake spring? Right. And then last Friday and Saturday, mm-hmm. boom, we got hit a lot. Yeah. Which kind of perfect timing. Of yeah, right. Yeah, uh, especially for Idaho Falls Snow Park. They had just posted saying, hey, um, this past weekend might be our last weekend. Oh, but, really? But I wonder if now that we've had a little more snow and cold, I wonder if they'll go for one more week mm-hmm. and weekend. That'd be cool. Well, and speaking of sled hills, too, um, again, it was kind of perfect timing because I don't know if you heard that Brick House Recovery actually did a little event called uh, Slopes for Hope. Which it's I, I'm sure it's a great event. Any event that rhymes or even sometimes alliterates has got to be a great event. Yeah. But basically they did a free sledding for people who came to the event and it's just for like, it's to support people who are in recovery, which I think is really cool. They had like a raffle and stuff, uh, the free sledding, like I mentioned, I think they had food and drinks and that all happened on Friday. And I remember hearing about Slopes for Hope and looking around being like, uh oh! <laughs> what, I hope they got those uh, snow making <laughs> right, machines right. going was, full blast. I was a little worried, and then right at the perfect time on the perfect day, they had this awesome Friday where it was just warm enough that you weren't freezing your tail off and you could be outside for a while, 
and this great, perfect, light, fluffy powder. Yeah, the big flakes, too. Uh-huh. It, I would call that Hallmark Channel Christmas movie snow. Oh, yeah. Like right when so they have a kiss on a bridge. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so super cool that they were doing that whole event just for the community to support people in recovery. I mean, always happy to see people improving themselves. That's cool. Absolutely. Uh, And just like, it's almost like the Cosmos smiled down on them. Yeah. Yeah. God has smiled upon you (laughs) this day. Have some snow. (laughs) (laughs) And that kind of stuff is really fun to drive through too, because you feel like it looks exactly like the hyperspace effect. Right. In Star Wars. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, no, I... It, and God forbid you have to drive through it at night with your lights, with your beams up. Oh, it's the worst. It's worse. Yeah, you might as well keep them down or just turn your fog lamps on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of terrifying and also exhilarating. Yes. Yeah. Definitely yeah. makes you feel like a space traveler. Like I imagine yeah, space travel, hyperspace mm-hmm. travel is. Which, I mean, speaking of space travel, mm-hmm. uh, can we talk about these little guys You here? want to get to this first thing before we even I, do our follow-ups. You're, you're maybe just can't, I'm terrible. Well, let's do one follow-up first. Okay. Then we'll try this. So, so let's bookmark space. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Here's what our good buddy, Kevin, the most interesting man in the world. And the nicest guy, too. Sent us. Look at this cool box. Which, how cute is that? If you know your logos, you know oh, you're look, looking at... Oh, look, there's a little rocket on it, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Let's, here's the lid. That's the most decorative part. Mm-hmm. Do we have that? I like the little DNA helix on there. That's cool. So cool. Um, And then check out these cookies that are in it. Oh, I love that. Oh, wow. He got us a little of everything, huh? What a hookup. <laughs> But wait, there's a there's sort of a catch. <clears throat> What's that? Uh, not from Kevin, but from the Girl Scouts of America. Can you tell these cookies are all <gasps> little brownie baker's cookies? Oh, no. So this is, okay, this is, okay, I believe. Okay, I actually should have clocked that when I saw that it said Samoa's. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is how it, ha- I, I was like, okay, where did we go wrong? I was like, Kevin, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but those are the ones we can get here. Uh-huh. This is how it happened. Episode one, we showed a map of ABC mm-hmm. Baker's territory versus Little Brownie Baker's territory. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I sh- love that it's territories like gangs. <laughs> I should have noticed then that knowing where our friends are, mm-hmm. that New York, the Girl Scouts of the Greater New York area, and um, Idaho Silver Sage, which I think we are right, mm-hmm. we're both Little Brownie's Baker's territory. Oh, crud. But then last episode, I said out loud, oh, yeah, because New York is ABC Baker's. That's what I thought, yeah. Boy, was I confused. Oh, no. We're both Little Brownie Bakers, but on the Girl Scouts website, it (laughs) says that Idaho Falls, Idaho is ABC Bakers territory. So when Kevin went shopping Uh online like he do, Uh (laughs) sometimes people don't think he'd be like he is, but he do. (laughs) Hilarious. Um, So (laughs) when he went shopping, he saw, okay, they're different than us. Right. So not only did I not have my facts straight, the Girl Scouts website (laughs) has us listed as ABC. So he saw, oh, they're different. To be fair, it is run by school children. (laughs) You would think, though, (laughs) that a responsible adult would be running that site. So I don't think it's actually run by school children. I was trying to make a funny joke. (laughs) Girl Scouts, what do you expect? (laughs) They mess everything up. Kidding. They make the world so, so much kidding. better. Kidding. I kid. I kid. You know what? Here's something I'm going to pose. I feel like the Girl Scouts do way more good than the Boy Scouts do. Sorry, Boy Scouts, come for me. But at the end of the day, you don't have an amazing cookie franchise out there that's nostalgic for millions of people. Yeah, what should Boy Scouts do? They should definitely do something. They should start doing something. Maybe like, I don't know, um, candy? The question is, something. what are we going to do with this? This is a ton of fresh Little Brownie Baker's Girl Scout cookies Uh that I cannot in good conscience eat or consume. Maybe you can. (laughs) And Kevin went all out. (laughs) I mean, at this point, I feel like what we do is we try to get our hands on the ABC Bakers and then we do a big cookie face off. Maybe we even buy, we invite well, some friends over and ulti- we buy two gallons of milk. Ultimately, that's the goal. Yeah. But but now that this has been done, and this I'm <laughs> sure, Kevin, was no small thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Our options are either A, Kevin bought us Girl Scout cookies this year and now we don't have to buy them for ourselves. B, um, I send them back to Kevin. 
Mm. But knowing him, he probably got plenty already. Right. Where are we on? C, we find a third-party broker in an ABC Baker's state. Right. We send these to you. You send yours to ours. We'll buy this equivalent here from our local Girl Scouts and then do the taste test. I love that idea. Can you think of any other solution? No, I think that's the perfect solution. Or even we could keep Kevin's cookies because it would probably be cheaper to have them ship it to... Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. So let's say, for example, our good buddy in Rhode Island, uh, who we will call MBMM. <laughs> yes. <laughs> MBMM. So let's say his has an ABC Baker's territory. And he's kind enough to send us a box. If he does that, we will send him a box of ours. And I think we should also send Kevin a box of ours. Well, but he's he can oh, get what we can get. So I, I don't know what to do at this point. Okay. Okay. But I do know what we should do right now. We were able to get our hands on going back to the space book, Mark. Yes. D's. <laughs> These are, as modeled by the lovely Carly Morgan, Oreo Space Dunk Cookies. Right. Which also, just call them Space Jam. Oh, I didn't even d d d like, draw that uh, <laughs> connection. Hilarious. But like, what does dunking have anything to do with space? Unless you're talking mm. about Space Jam, baby. <laughs> That's true. Now, if they call them like Space Crackle, I'd get that because they apparently have, uh, you know, basically... Pop, uh, what's it called? Those little poppets, pop, poppy well, candy. Let's, yeah, let's describe the flavor of. Read what it yes. says under flavor for these Oreo Space Dunk so, limited edition cookies. Five galactic designs and cosmic cream with popping candy. Okay, so they're going the Coca Cola route, where they're pop rocks, right? I couldn't think of the name of the candy. <laughs> they're going the. Um, Coca-Cola route because they're naming things now after concepts. Right. Which really, if you think about it, I think the OG concept flavor, blue raspberry. Oh, for sure. What's blue raspberry? That's what it tastes like. Right. Okay. And, and honestly, they're kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> and also, banana. So apparently back when fake banana flavoring was made, that is how bananas tasted. Mm -hmm. They don't anymore. They it's, don't taste anything like that. It's a different strain, a different variety, because the yeah. original bananas that we had back in mid-century, mm -hmm. 40s, I want to say, um, it like they got wiped out by a disease. And so, Which also, I'm so sad I didn't get to taste those bananas because banana candy is so good. Oh, yeah. Well, don't tease us. Let's open up this brand new package yeah. and give it a go. And Kevin, I'm sorry these aren't Girl Scout cookies. Ooh la la, look at those. Look at and that. can I point out that there are colors? Yes. Which is so fun. Blue, Here. pink, and the package you is purple. You choose your first one. I like colors that end in purple. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that sandwich. I love that it's a little pink and a little blue. Here's the pink. Ooh, okay. This is something kind of funny. I'm going to see if I can show this off to the camera. So it's a little Spaceman helmet. With a visor so you can see the cream through it. And when you pop it off, there's like a little nipple. A little nubbin. Yeah, a nubbin. That's a much better word for it. But you can also put it directly back on. Nubbin, nubbin. says lubbin like rubbing on the nubbin. <laughs> no, what? And by the way, dear Oreo, no one cares about your designs. I care. They What? I think they're kind of cute. <laughs> okay, fine. I think they're nice. Shall we? Yeah. Okay, now, how much Pop Rock is in this? Now, I'm going to eat this the way that I usually eat this, which is disgusting. Mm. And I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> You're eating one of the chocolate cookies now. Mm -hmm. You're peeling the frosting off. You're eating the mm -hmm. other cookie. Mm -hmm. You've now got a fr Oreo frosting space dunk roll-up. Taco. Taco even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, usually I'll have like two or three cookies at once and peel all of the frosting off of them, eat all the cookies, if I feel like it, or I'll just let them go to waste and then just eat the cream because that's, that's the best part. <laughs> I think I just heard a pop rock crack mm. in your voice. Either that How? or our podcast is now being published on vinyl. Mm. Or that hip. That could be. I'm licking my fingers. Sorry if that's gross. Not enough mm. poppy rocky for me. Not enough sparkly, mm. fun joy, happy and happiness in mouth. 
if you spread it really thin across your palate, then you get some good crackle. Ooh. Oh, I got, I heard that. Mm-hmm. Okay, throw me another Oreo. I'm going to mm-hmm. totally waste one of these. Pretty please. Thank mm-hmm. you. Ooh, I got a nubbin now. Your your nubbin was blue. My nubbin mm-hmm. was pink. Mine was pink and blue. You you have the inferior nubbin. I can hear the crackling in your can voice. Can you hear it? Uh-huh. It's kind of nice. So now I'm just doing the frosting too. Mm. Have you ever seen those videos of people who give uh, Pop Rocks to babies? No. They're so cute. Is that like the baby's child faces? No. I mean, they're like old enough to eat. Okay. Yeah, but like the babies just get like weirded out because they're like, what's going on? <laughs> right. I could watch babies eating lemons all day. <laughs> they're so funny. They're little faces. <laughs> Oh, Bean Boy really wants some. I don't know if he can have... He can't have Pop Rocks, can he? I feel like Pop Rocks would kill a dog. Mm. Yeah, you don't know what his digestive system is capable of or yeah. incapable of. Well, and how do they make him pop? What is the chemical that they use for that? Oh, Isn't it just nitrogen-filled? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a scientist. That's why I'm here doing a podcast. Here we are. <laughs> Doing follow-ups and creating more follow-ups. Okay. Can I say something disgusting sure. that you're going to hate? <clears throat> I feel like this is a good snack if you are trying to track the time between when you eat something and when you excrete it. <laughs> Just based on this very blue color. Like, say, corn or peanuts. Right. Right. Because I remember one time I got this ice cream that was this color. Mm-hmm. And I knew when it was gone. <laughs> okay. Once, do you remember dinosaurs? Mm, mm-hmm. They were these gummy dinosaurs, and you know, I love mm-hmm. all things gummy, mm-hmm. but they were D-Y-E mm-hmm. no sores. Mm-hmm. And I got a blue one, mm-hmm. and true to form, true to their marketing, it turned my entire mouth and tongue blue. Mm-hmm. Let's just say the next morning, I was freaked out until I remembered mm-hmm. what I had had the day before. Right. I wonder if I... Almost called for the mommy at that point. (laughs) Help me, I'm dying. (laughs) Like asparagus pee. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Or like a 13-year-old girl. (gasps) That first time. During that time of the month. Oh. When they think that they're dying because their parents haven't given them the talk. Just give your kids the talk, dude. (laughs) They broke apart my insides. Dude. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I knew what was happening because it did feel like I was dying and it looked like I was dying. I Like... If I wouldn't have known better, I would have thought I was dying. Let's just call it a crime scene and leave it at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just the worst. Another food-related follow-up from a few episodes ago. Carly, I finally saw those Reese's Pink Hearts. (gasps) Right? If you haven't seen them, here they are. Also, I was so sad I couldn't find any anywhere. I wanted some so bad. They definitely (laughs) resemble the... uh, some male anatomy. The jumblies. Yeah, <laughs> the jumblies. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if if there was ever anyone that you wanted to very kindly say, go choke on a ball sack too, mm-hmm. this is how you would do it. <laughs> this is how you do it. And I wonder how it got past everybody at corporate. All the board meetings, all the product development. Well, because they showed all the right side up. Sure, but come on. You mean to tell me there wasn't one dude in there who went, <laughs> I know, right? I, and I like how strict mm. is Reese's HR department? Mm. Was this fail a result of nobody feeling free to speak up in an HR meeting? I doubt it. Hey guys, um, does anybody think they look like ball sex? <laughs> like, can you say that? I in you've a corporate gotta be meeting able to. There's got to be, right? There's got to right. be. I genuinely think that it was just them saying like, oh, no, people aren't going to think that. Like, clearly it's a heart. They're so used to it always being a heart. Like, all of our other hearts look fine. Why would it look not fine in pink? No one's going to think of it like that. And also, it's a pretty hot pink, you know? So they're like, well, if it was nude, then maybe, but it's not, so it's fine. They look like a couple of pink bulldog cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's true. They totally do. Okay. And that's why I'm so sad I couldn't get any. (laughs) Darn it. Something else we've talked about now for three episodes in a row, Shaq's shoe size while he's selling seashells by the seashore. Uh Uh, (laughs) Uh-huh. Last week we learned that uh, he is a size 20, but he wears a size 22 because his mom couldn't afford 
the shoes when he was a kid, and so he always had to wear them until they were almost too tight. Mm-hmm. So now he likes them loose. Yeah. And you said, or maybe it's because... He wants to share them with Bigfoot. And I thought, okay, let's figure out. This was a tough one to get a consensus on. But I believe, according to plaster casts made of footprints Mm -hmm. presumed to be Bigfoot's, Bigfoot's shoe size is, are you ready for this? A size 22. Oh, really? (laughs) How interesting is that? So you, without knowing it. (laughs) Shaq, I'm looking at you. Also, at this point, they need to make Shaq do one of those uh, Sasquatch commercials. Yeah. Because hilarious. Thank you for the bit. Also, (laughs) I accept accept your gratitude in monetary form. Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin would be great. Whatever you got. Last follow-up. Last week, it was a slow news week. So we got to riff a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some of the things we say... Get edited out. Not last week. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had this giant Sorry about that. six minute sidebar in between the two Rexburg <laughs> activities to discuss mythical urban legend bedroom activities, shall mm-hmm. we say? Yeah, right. Uh, in reference to the last one, the um, remember we it was it's soaking, but it involves a third party. To, right. Uh, yeah. So a very good friend of the show. I won't say who uh-huh. this time. Uh, sent me a clip. Got to from... preserve his reputation. Yeah. From <laughs> bad reputation, bad <laughs> reputation. Um, we're getting geared up for a Taylor Swift thing. I'll we'll explain right. that later. Um, but he sent me a show called Jury Duty. It's on Amazon Prime. It's if you're a Prime subscriber, it's free. Mm-hmm. It stars James Marsden. You know who that is, right? Oh, that beautiful man from Enchanted. Yes. Yeah. Prince Edward. Right. Right. And, and he. Oh, he's also in the Notebook. Yes, he's the other guy. He's the not other Ryan Gosling, guy. but also, I mean, is it Rachel McAdams? If I mean, if you looked like Rachel McAdams, you could pull. You could probably you know, choose both between. of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with ease. Maybe one could be the soaker and one could be the jumper. There we go. <laughs> and then switch. <laughs> okay. So he sent me this clip of the show called Jury Duty. The show is half scripted, half ad libbed, I guess. Oh, really? Because the concept is there's a guy who's invited to serve on a jury as part of a documentary about Mm -hmm. the justice system. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a case, there's a defendant, there's a plaintiff, there's a judge, there's other jury members, including James Marsden. Mm -hmm. What the uh, person who has been invited doesn't know is... They're all paid actors. Oh, really? It's, I got to say, thank you for sending that to me. It's fascinating to watch. And the soaking scene is episode five. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Well, and you showed me the scene and I want to get a little semantic here and point okay. out technically. Wait, wait, sorry. Let me cut you off right there. Uh, okay. Parents, if you got kids in the car, just hit forward 30 seconds a couple times. Probably smart. Go. Uh, but technically what's happening in that scene is not soaking. Mm-hmm. It's jump pumping. Right. Right. I didn't want to say that word two episodes in a row. Right. But yeah. But one's a two-party act and one's a three-party act. Right. And with the third party, there's got to be some communication there. Right. <laughs> so in, in this scene, there's um, the girl says, bigger jumps, bigger jumps. And the guy's like, no, 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 smaller jumps. <laughs> okay, I do want to throw out one extra little scenario here. Hilarious. <laughs> Is it like a massage where they say, okay, go ahead and get undressed and get in position. I'll be right back. They always or, say get undressed to your level of comfort. Right. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> Right. But like, you know, you're supposed to be on the table with the sheet pulled up before they come in, right? Yes, I think that's the way this was handled. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Because in this scene, the jumper was dressed while the, they were partially. The jumper was James Marston, by the way. And Did I say, I think I Right. Did. And to your point before, <laughs> um, where you were saying that you don't think that these have actually ever happened. Seeing this scene, it did sort of make me realize that I think that you are correct in your last argument of the last episode where you said that you don't think any of this has actually happened. Right. It's all urban legends. Happened to a friend of a friend. Right. And here's why. (laughs) Because if you are someone who chooses to save themselves before marriage and and you've decided to be vulnerable with someone that means a lot to you, there's no way that you're going to let some other rando in the room... Right. So that you can have this nice, sensitive moment with this person. How would you choose? You know, like... If Family you're... member? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
Um, Close personal friend? Like, yeah. Is it is it your... Okay, if you're the girl, is it going to be your gal pal, his dude friend, yeah. or some random neutral third party that neither of you know that well, but who's like cool, hey, I th- guess? They're cool and they're non-binary. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like, how do you choose this third person? Right. And who would be comfortable with a third person in the room? Right. Yeah. First time is awkward enough. Right. You don't need to make it more awkward. Yeah. But I mean, then there's also like that, not to bring another urban legend in, mm-hmm. but there's also that urban legend of those folks in Nevada I think Las Vegas specifically, uh, they were a bunch of college students going to a religious school down there who were getting married so that they could and then getting divorced so they could get married to someone else. I've heard of that. And I feel like I feel like back in the day I saw a whole article on it. Okay. And again, it goes weekend weddings. (laughs) Right. Right. And And then Monday morning annulment. (laughs) Right. And it again goes back to your previous point of do you think you're tricking God? Right, right. Like, if that's Do the whole you reason think you're saving this yourself. This is fooling anybody. Right, right. Yeah. All right, let's start off with food. Ooh, I do like food. Like we suggested last episode, we ended up going to Rexburg for a little day trip. We did. Had some of our favorite curry pizza. What's up? Mm-hmm. If you haven't tried, look, if you haven't tried curry pizza and you like Indian food, you got to do that. You have to. If you haven't Even tried, if you just like pizza. Yeah. If you haven't tried Indian food yet, I know some of some people, even in my circle, mm-hmm. are kind of afraid to try Indian food. Right. Even now. I want to tell you, you can't go wrong with butter chicken, mm-hmm. chicken tikka masala, mm-hmm. and garlic naan. You can't. That's the flatbread. Yeah. Just order that. Good. Zero spice. Maybe ask mm-hmm. for spice on the side, but beware a tandoori oven. It'll burn. Right, right. Burn. You know- <laughs> I actually have a friend who's nearing <laughs> nearing her 60s who's never had Indian food. She was like, hey, you want to go to dinner? And I was like, oh, yeah, you want to hit up tandoori oven? And she's like, I can't handle any new foods now. Like, I've never had Indian food before. And I was like, oh, okay. Like the guy from a couple episodes ago. What the hell is pho? Right, right. <laughs> so anyway, actually, I think you're right that curry pizza is kind of the perfect dinner yeah. for someone who is who wants to dabble in Indian food? You know, you just want a little tasty taste, but not too much. Give it a try because you're going to get to know <laughs> your um, Indian grandmother that you never had. It right. tastes like home. It's so good. Oh, so good. Especially in the winter. Right. Yeah. Even in the summer too. But honestly, we need to, the next time we go, get the dipping sauce on the side though. Like we need to ask for extra sauce on the side. Get butter chicken dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. Like Papa John's has that crappy garlic (laughs) butter. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) I say crappy, but you love it. I love garlic butter. I do so much. It's so good. But we we actually wanted to talk about crispy cones. Yes. So check this place out. You order at a kiosk. They've got a nice little Instagram place to shoot Mm -hmm. your cones. Right. You got vanilla strawberry cookie dough. Uh, yes, I did. Oh, and it was so cookie butter. That's what it was. Cookie butter, the speculose, uh-huh. speculus. It's it's like the Biscoff cookies you get on the exactly. airplanes, mm-hmm. <laughs> which oh, you can also so get on good. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Pro tip: if mm-hmm. you really like those, and I do. Which also, it's basically like a gingerbread kind of. Yeah, it's a spicy. It's yeah. a spicy uh, butter. <laughs> yeah, it's a spicy a cookie. <laughs> 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 And All of the Italians who hear this are going to think we're just assholes, <laughs> and they'd be right. <laughs> you know what? I, I have noticed, though, there's still a few accents that you can still not make fun of, but parody. Oh, uh-huh. And I know this because I watch a lot of Simpsons. The two that seem to still be okay are the Italian accent. Uh, mm-hmm. And then there's also the, um, let's see, gay Latino hairdresser. Oh, honey, do you think you don't know anything, but you <laughs> you look great. <laughs> That's okay. Which feels like, that feels like you're- Appropriating two things? Two things. Yeah, exactly. But it's, I, I think- It's like it's, Jeopard- double jeopardy. I think it's because <laughs> it's done out of love. It's true. First of all, it's true. Second, it's done out of love. Not those, yeah, right, right. not like racist cartoons during World War II. Yeah. But it's done out of, aren't, aren't people like that adorable? Right. Who doesn't love that. spaghetti? And yeah. who doesn't love a haircut from a fabulous gay man? Right. No Honestly. one. Doesn't like Sarah Lee. <laughs> what am I trying to say? It's so hard to do a, a double negative in a sentence. I get it. That's a spicy uh, cookie butter. Yeah. And 
uh, the cones were just fantastic. Oh, they were so good. Wow. Weirdly, I think the cones were even better than the ice cream. The, oh, absolutely. You yeah. could go and just get the cone. Yeah. That's that one of the was options. Good. And it reminded, it reminded me a lot of those uh, Transylvanian treats that come to the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market. They have those chimney pastries. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember those. Last summer we had one, right? We did. And they, oh, it was so good. It's like, a, it's like if you took a cinnamon bun, but you made it a cylinder. And I have to say, walking into crispy cones, I was like, I'm not sure how thrilling <laughs> soft serve ice cream can be. Right. But they so they had chocolate vanilla and then a flavor of the week, which in this case was French toast. Uh-huh. So good. How do they make it taste toasted? Like it's ice cream. You can't I toast ice cream, but it tastes toasted. What flavor is even French toast? Butter right. and cinnamon? Uh, uh, and and bread? toastedness? Yeah. It's like Cuz you did say uh, this this tastes toasted. It does. How can ice cream taste toasted? Uh, do they have toast extract? I have to assume that they have some kind of like liquid smoke or something. Like liquid toast crumbs or something. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, there is also like Mexican fried ice cream. So, oh, yeah. and I think they actually do fry it. I've never made it. We should find out. Next time on IFAF. <laughs> <laughs> That's follow up number two we're now yeah. responsible for. Uh huh. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So that was great. Thank you so much, Crispy Cones. And then on Sunday, we did a brunch uh, that uh, I hadn't heard about yet. Mm hmm. Bardoza's Tap House. So here's the funny thing. I actually had heard of them before, but they weren't doing brunch when I did hear of them. So I was like, well, I'll think about it. But um, back when I was working retail, the owners came in. We got to talking. They mentioned that they owned it. And I was like, oh, I have a podcast. Maybe I'll come in and try your stuff. Well, we and finally then, did. And then, fi- you know, months passed. And then yes. we were like, hey, let's go. It's brunch. We'll get to it eventually. You don't have to <laughs> remind me every six months about it. Right, right. <laughs> So here's their logo. That that's a hops berry. I don't, is that a berry? Whatever. It's a hops fruit. Uh-huh. Um, as the O in Bardoza's. Uh huh. And then I had the uh, Bardoza's brunch witch. Mm-hmm. And I had the eggs Benedoza, which is basically a clever name for the eggs Benedict. Um, and they were great. Lots of hollandaise on it. And some jalapenos. Yeah, that was a fun twist. Which I've never... And okay, so you know that my whole thing, whenever we go to brunch, for, like, I love me some Eggs Benny. Mm-hmm. I do. They're just so good. Every time I get Eggs Benedict, I'm not disappointed. And I want to say that, you know, bar food can be hit and miss sometimes. Oh, totally. But this was great. It was awesome. And it was quick. Yes, like, it was I really fast. I think we were in and out of there in 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you go to the cast iron... It can be an hour and 45 minutes. Right, right. So that was a fun kind of, we feel like we went out, feel like we had brunch, and give them a try if you want. Right. I will say one thing. Little note. Only because we loved it. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. On the Eggs Benedoza, I feel like it might benefit from being... A little saucier and a little cheesier. And I think the perfect solution to that is a little cream cheese because it is the sauciest cheese that I could think of. Carly puts <laughs> cream cheese or sour cream on everything. So keep I, that in mind. That's true. That's true. Even Reed's Dairy <laughs> Tomato Soup, which is basically, I think, Campbell's <laughs> Tomato Soup. They don't hide it. With right. Reed's Dairy Milk in it. Yeah. <laughs> she puts cream in. Sometimes. To be fair, it doesn't that one doesn't need much. So if I choose to do it, it's yeah. because I'm craving sour cream. Yeah. Uh but anyway, um, but yeah, a little cream cheese, especially with that jalapeno, I think would just balance that out amazingly. Speaking of Reed's Dairy, if you're listening to this before Wednesday, March 6th, that's Stuff Your Stanley Day. Oh, funny. Yeah. Four <laughs> scoops for ten dollars all day long. Wednesday, <laughs> March 6th. Okay, and also, they're completely correct that a Stanley is the perfect vessel yeah. for that much ice cream. <laughs> Stick a straw in it and suck it all day long. Well, I just figure because any other um, container will allow the ice cream to melt so fast that you won't be able to get through before it's milkshake. I love that Reed's Dairy has stepped up their marketing game, or maybe they always do fun stuff like this. Uh-huh. But stuff your Stanley cup. I mean, that is, right. that's hilarious, you guys. Right. Well, especially well after done. how big Stanley's have been. <laughs> exactly. I love that. That's sort of the essence of, I think, promotional gimmicks. Right. What's hot right now. Yeah. And then just jump on it. Yeah. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> now, that being said, if I come in with a Yeti, 
Are they going to discriminate? I think it's four scoops for $10. Okay, that's hot. If you come in with a 64 ouncer, <laughs> they're probably not going to fill it to the brim. Probably not. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like one of those old Maverick mugs. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of soup, something kind of cool. The Idaho Falls Soup Kitchen gave away its millionth meal last Thursday. Kind of sad that they had to in the sense that like, it's sad that there were it's a, good point. a million people that needed meals. But, but, but since 1985, I think. Oh, okay. I mean, that's pretty good. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and also- Nearly 40 years. Yeah. Well, and also how great that there was that resource for people when they were hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, sad that there were that many hungry people. Glad that there was this great place that they could go and get a healthy, good, nutritious meal. So excellent job, IFSK. Yeah. And that makes you IFAF. Crisp high five. Whoosh. 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss to you. To you. One other restaurant-related thing. Did you hear Wendy's last week, for some idiotic reason, made it known that they were contemplating surge pricing? I can't believe they even let that outside of the boardroom. Yeah. That was just dumb. Uh, as a consumer, and this was a hot issue for two days until Wendy's tried to walk it back and say, oh, no, what we were talking about was offering discounts at non-peak times. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking as a consumer... Hmm, where do I go to lunch today? I know. How about the place that jacks up their prices right. during lunch? Yeah, so dumb. If this, we've talked about late stage capitalism versus late stage capitalism before. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get sick of seeing all these articles about company grocery stores. There's only like five major companies in the US. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and they had record profits this past quarter or year or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, like it's. Corporate price gouging is getting out of control. Right. And I'm all for less government interference until you, here's what you do. You act like a parent. You give them enough rope to hang themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when they start doing stock buybacks after they were too big to fail and still failed. Right. It's not like you can privatize gain, but make loss public. Right. You know, you Except can't. Except that's what they do. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. No, Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it's so funny because I actually saw this really great argument alongside this where someone said, oh, okay, well, if you're going to do surge pricing because you're so busy, are you also going to do surge wages? Right. For the people who actually have to deal with it being that busy? Because, like, the cost of the supply doesn't go up. The only thing that goes up is that you have to pay more people to be there. Did you hear the Mackenzie River? In Idaho Falls. Oh, I know. Got busted for um, basically mm -hmm. not pl paying their employees minimum wage. They had to share their, the servers and wait staff had to share their tips with the back of house. Ooh, which here's the thing. I'm not opposed to that in general, but it should be a portion of it. Because really, that's the thing. When people are giving tips, they're giving it specifically to their waiter. Exactly. For a job well done. Mm -hmm. And then I guess they got a, saw a 15 year old. Back in the baking area, which wow. I don't think is allowed. I think it's 16. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Which I thought in Idaho it was 15 and up, but maybe not in certain fields. I'm yeah. not super sure. Guess what? I'm not an Idaho lawmaker. I don't know anything about the law. Have you just committed <laughs> us to our third follow-up now? Oh, probably. <laughs> hey, next week's show is done already. <laughs> right, right. All right. Uh, but you know, in the comment section of that post, I saw someone mentioning that they, as a 15-year-old, had worked at a couple of other restaurants and that they were doing some of the same practices. So I'm kind of hoping that this is an opportunity for hey, Department of Labor. For restaurants that are doing that to rehabilitate some of their policies and procedures and uh, treat people a little bit better, especially because, okay, first of all, in this economy, I can't even imagine existing on minimum wage because you can't buy anything for oh, yeah, that. Yeah, you got to have three or four roommates, right? <laughs> even not on minimum wage, you need at least three or four roommates sometimes, you know, but making under minimum wage while working... And having to pay for stuff, absolutely nuts to me. I don't know how they could do, I don't know how they could afford anything. Well, and then, you know, sort of relying on your own personal level of customer service and charm mm -hmm. and getting that fat tip. And then, and then it's communism after that. You know, you got to share it with everybody. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I did work. Uh, waiting tables for a while and there were some people you had to tip out like the hostess and the bartender and I think that's perfectly fine and appropriate because they're people who helped make your customers experience as good as you did 
back of the house, though, usually made more money than front of the house, and that's why you didn't have to tip them out. And to be fair, they also helped to contribute to that experience. But there's a very... Really, all waitressing is is schmoozing. Yeah. That's it. It's None of us want to think or believe we're in sales. Most people are. It is. In exactly. sales. You're selling yourself. Right. Like, there were nights when I did not bring my A-game, and I just was, I was done. I had a crappy day at my other job, and I was tired and beat up and didn't want to be there, and I would just be like, hey, what do you want? Cool. Whatever. And then there were nights when I'd be like, what are we getting for dessert? We wanted some appetizers, right? You know, I had this one the other day, and it was amazing. You Another drink? That. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. There were days when my salesmanship was amazing, and I deserved that dang tip. Right. And then there were days when my salesmanship super sucked <laughs> because things were hard, and I didn't deserve as good of a tip, and that's okay. And that's the way it goes. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the way the news goes. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, real quick, want to show you this uh, shirt that is not, unfortunately, available on TetonT-shirts.com because I haven't gotten a straight answer from my lawyer yet. Mm -hmm. When it comes to copyright law, he told me, the answer is always maybe. Right. Uh, theoretically, you can change 25%, 20% of an image and, and have it be your own new creation or parody. Mm -hmm. We've changed, we've taken Robert Indiana's famous love sculpture from somewhere in Indiana, India, no place. Wherever. <laughs> and um, and we've replaced the L with the shape of the state of Idaho. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll va be available soon. Which is technically 25% because there's only four letters in that word. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and can I just point out, I love how you used Idaho for the letter L instead of some other letter that you could try to use it for that it doesn't look anything like. <laughs> to our point in a previous podcast, <laughs> here was a big L last oh. week. The state of Idaho failed to execute a man who was all out of pardons and appeals mm -hmm. and stuff. He's one of the longest running death row inmates in the United States and the longest running inmate in the state of Idaho. Okay, his, wow. His name is Thomas Eugene Creech, mm -hmm. and he murdered a bunch of people 50 years ago, as I understand it. A, a bunch being like all in one event? Well, or? so he like confessed to a whole bunch, but they definitely got him on two. Or okay. according to the New York Times article, thank you, Kevin, it was five. But this was all 50 years ago. Okay. And he was scheduled to be executed by lethal injection. Last week, three doctors attempted a total of eight times uh -huh. to find a vein, and they just couldn't. Oh, crud. <laughs> now- Maybe he had one of those really rolly veins. As someone who's had to draw blood before, those are a real bitch. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I know one of my arms when I give blood is easier to poke than the other. Mm -hmm. But my point is, isn't there like a jugular vein? Like, isn't there like I a mean, main vein you can, like, I don't know what they were trying to do IVs maybe on the back of his hands like they do. So uh, usually you go for the elbow first. Okay. okay. Um, if that doesn't work, then you can go to the back of the hand. Um, I'm trying to think of, those were the only two I ever had to poke, but I was in clinical research, so I didn't really do that much poking. Um, but yeah, I think, well, <laughs> I was going to say, I think jugular is a little too dangerous, but considering what we're doing. <laughs> considering the end goal, right? But also the training would have been lacking because they don't train people to do that. I don't know if you, a phlebotomist is a phlebotomist. Are they not? Yeah, but I mean- as someone who's had to draw blood before, there are just easier places on the body to get blood out of. But this isn't even drawing. Couldn't they just go needle to the neck? Quack! Well, no, because that- I think I saw that in a movie once. Well, but that could be intramuscular. So if it's a sedative or something, then that's fine. But where it's a lethal injection, you want that to be intravenous because then it's going to travel to the heart. The whole point of lethal injection is that it's as painless as you can get. And I do want to make it clear I'm against inhumane treatment for prisoners or prisoners of war or right. whatever. But the end goal is to do this guy in. Right. And here's what I don't understand. Like, why didn't they have a firing squad on backup? Because last year, due to apparently a um, limited supply of lethal injection drugs, mm -hmm. Governor Brad Little brought the firing squad back, made it legal wow. again. You know, 
So that's what we need to do. You're not totally wrong. And one thing that is nice about the firing squad for the sake of those who are doing the firing is that they load all but one of their bullets with blanks. Yes, correct. There's only one real bullet. So you don't know if you're the guy who did it or not. You can go to bed at night with a clean conscience. Yeah. Knowing that, you know. Not knowing that you were the one who did it. Well, yeah. Knowing that you only had a one in five chance. Right. Of being the guy and deliver and, you know, delivering that. And also knowing 50 years of taxpayer money going to feed and house this guy. Here's the thing. I have, I don't care about money at the end of the day. I know you're against the no, death penalty. That's the thing. I'm not okay. fully. I think that there are certain crimes that do deserve death. Like realistically, if you're like a child molester or a murderer or something heinous like that, that has no place in society. I do think that those crimes do deserve death, and I recognize that our justice system is biased and that our methods of gathering evidence are imperfect. Like the, yeah, like mm -hmm. the wrongful conviction and incarceration for nearly 20 years. Of Chris Tapp. Of our buddy Christopher Tapp. Exactly. And we just found out last week, too, that that was, that it is his, now being. His autopsy ruled it a definite homicide. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Mm -hmm. I told you so. Right. So that's my Excuse only point. Me. Is if there is no doubt, no, not even um, no. Okay, I know there's a legal term. Beyond no, a reasonable doubt. Not even no reasonable doubt, but no doubt. Period. Then sure, then death penalty is fine. But yeah. there have been so many people who have been sentenced to death only to be exonerated later. And I just think that is too flawed of a system to rely on. And I agree. I just, the guys like confessed <clears throat> to the things at this point. Ah, uh, but and I mean, there's coerced confession. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm just saying we've spent five, counting right. five decades going through this. Pretty right. sure we've got it figured out now. Basically, if they have enough evidence to them, I think it's totally fine. For example, Lori Vallow, she definitely did it. We all know she did it. There was no hiding that she did it. Anyone with less evidence than that, I might be a little bit more hesitant to say definitely the death penalty. Lori, though, deserves it. Right. Yep. Okay, Idaho Department of Corrections, let's just get it done. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else feel that way? And you know what? Probably this poor guy feels that way, too. I mean, after all that time, yeah. I mean, he's got to be like, what, 70? At this point, he might not even make it to the next time that they want to execute him. I'm just jealous that he got to have two last meals. <laughs> Kidding. It's kind of messed up. It's dark. I wonder what it was. We uh, should find out. Another follow-up. <laughs> a guy, and you know, we were talking about how somebody created the Taylor Swift porno with right. AI. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Idaho is trying to pass an anti-doing that law, by Good, the way. As they should. Yeah. And I think for the rest of our lives now, we're going to be hearing about AI perpetrated crimes. Right. Did you hear about the guy last week in Glasgow, Scotland, who had a uh, Willy Wonka themed family event called Willy's Chocolate Experience? Well, he used AI to create these images that are a thousand times cooler than either the original with Gene Wilder or the uh, remake with Johnny Depp. I haven't seen the one with Timothy Chalamet yet. <laughs> yeah, Tim Tam Chalamet. But um, <laughs> man, it just, it was eye candy. And people paid 44 bucks for a ticket. I think wow. 35 euros, 44 of our dollars. Yikes. To attend this thing. And then it was like. Was the kid's ticket as expensive, do you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And here's the thing. It was this warehouse with like, it, it almost looks like. Something you could put together with a week's notice and uh, a credit card on Amazon. Like it yeah, had, probably. it was just this stark warehouse. Mm -hmm. Like you could definitely tell you were in a warehouse. Oh, bummer. Look, look at these lame posters and this little rainbow entryway. And the kicker is there was no chocolate. Kids got exactly one jelly bean and a cup of lemonade. And what? then they ran out of that stuff too. So the organ, it was just a massive fail. If, oh, no. if you're watching, we threw some pictures up for you so you could see this. And the actors got screwed out of the deal. Really? Yeah, like they haven't gotten paid as of right now that we know of. 
Wow. Um, one particular Oompa Loompa looking lady just got went viral and got interviewed, I think, by Vulture.com. But, uh-huh. um, you know, she just tried to make the best out of a bad situation. You know, when the doors opened, they realized, mm-hmm. oh, geez, we're screwed, but we're here. They had this, you know, Willy Wonka guy. I think we've got a video of that greeting people when they came in. But that was the extent of it. And so oh, no. eventually, you know, people started asking for their money back. Right. But this no talent hack, Billy Cool is his name, finally shut it down. But I get I, that sounds like a pseudonym. <laughs> he, right. Well, it's Billy C O U L L. Still, that sounds that sounds like he was really trying to be cool. <laughs> Come to find out, he just started publishing like AI novels on Amazon. Oh, that's sucks. Even using AI to write a description of the book <clears throat> and a bio for himself. It's just, it's this guy. Which I who's... guarantee he hasn't read all of the books the whole way through, so they suck. No, no. You can tell when things are written by AI. Yeah. It's that uncanny valley of reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, he blamed it on third-party vendors who all fell apart at the last minute. But, so all I don't them, know if it all was All of them, a, Billy? Yeah. I don't know if it was a deliberate scam- AI perpetrated scam or just a massive fail on his part. What a bummer, dude. And that's why making this all about us, because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's why I think Idaho is the show me state. Yeah. A lot of entrepreneurs, right, have a first annual. We have a Mm. lot. We have way more first annual events than we have second annual events. (laughs) Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like the first annual Nagathon, <laughs> which I'm really excited. And I, I hope that we do have a second annual Nagathon. If we don't, I will be so disappointed. And you know I what? I think there is going to be. If by then we're big enough, we'll put it on if like <laughs> if that's what it takes, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's we uh, we don't take too kindly to being fleeced around here. Yeah, no. We went to, wasn't uh, the retro... Con. Retro Expo is Retro coming back Expo. up. Yes. Th- last year was the first year we went to that and it mm-hmm. was actually cool, right? It was. It was, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, here's the thing. It was a little hot in the building, <laughs> but was. you could tell that a good effort was put in and it looked really nice. I do remember one of your comments from last year and you saying that it was hot in the building kind of reminded me of this. Uh-huh. There was uh, at least one person there mm-hmm. who forgot to wear deodorant that morning. Ah, uh, yes. I remember this. Uh-huh. Like I imagine smelling like comic book guy in The Simpsons smells. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when you think incel and a scent comes to mind, that was what I smelled. All right. <laughs> maybe that was the actual name of the Axe body spray he put on that morning. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because the names are getting out of control. So I, fun fact about me. You ready for this? Since I was 17, I've used the same deodorant. And it's wow. always been available anywhere I've gone, but it's becoming less and less available. So I know I'm going to have to switch at some point. If you're wondering what flavor it is, it's Old Spice Classic Fresh Scent. Not what? original scent, fresh scent. Flavor? Yes. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give, give your pit a little tongue bath. <laughs> um, so you got to see this picture of deodorants at Walmart. Look at the... Okay, so speaking of Old Spice, you know, maybe I'm a Virgo and I'm loyal to a particular brand. And can I throw out really quick... Any women's deodorant that's called Fresh Scent always smells just gross. Yeah. Like it smells like powdered baby's butt. Yeah. Right. You know? Why do they have to make women's stuff powdery and men's stuff? I saw a charcoal one. Yeah. It's always like dark ice. <laughs> yeah. Dragon taint. <laughs> yeah. Kraken <laughs> guard. Yeah. Bear glove. Either that or bear g- Love. <laughs> Berg love? Night Panther, Shark Hammer, Mamba yeah. King, Raptor Strike, Alpha Centauri, Dragon Blast. Well, and can I mention how much of men's deodorant is not really scent based? It's temperature based. It's always cool or fiery or something like that. Yeah. Smoky. Or, I mean, it sounds like they just had a random name gen- generator with uh, a uh, apex predator. Yes. And um, <laughs> an action word. Yes. You know? Yeah. Or a feeling. Yeah. But the cold one, I, you know, like, I don't want to smell like a bad boy on Christmas. <laughs> Maybe I do. But um, it, <laughs> it reminds me of a, um, an old general manager I had. And he was a short dude. How tall uh-huh. are you? Five five? I'm five five, yep. I bet he was maybe even a little shorter than you. Ooh, five four, short king. So I would walk into his office 
And every time I'd crack up because first of all, he had this huge truck and I, I don't think I ever saw him get in it, <laughs> but I bet it had one of those ladders that came down. It had to have like that little extra step when you open the door. <laughs> had to have, like he drove it with a block of wood on his foot, like <laughs> short round in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I've actually gotten into a really big truck before. Hang on, Indy. <laughs> and I remember like looking up into it and being like, how does anyone do this? I had to hoist myself up like a toddler getting onto a dining room chair. But this general manager had on his wall, d- directly behind him, by the way, it was a big poster of like a leopard, uh-huh. like with his teeth showing. Whoa. He had, do you remember the Hulk hands when those were popular? Right. Uh-huh. He had those. He just had, he had a copy of The Art of War in his bookshelf. Funny. Like it was all staged. So that you knew this was a man's office. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. To prove that he was a big man. <laughs> And one time I went in there with, um, I don't know, a coworker, and we sat down and he had gotten a new thing. I don't remember what it was. Probably a samurai sword letter opener or something, you know? His office was just so violent. (laughs) Every time you walk in, you're that meme, oh, we got a badass over here. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) And I I pointed at it when he was looking, with the GM was looking at a computer, so I was like, this is going to be one. (laughs) Nobody else found that as funny as I did. How? How can you not? But if you need, de- my whole point is, if you need deodorant to feel like a, ma- if you need Night Panther, this what's the one, the one from Anchorman, the cologne that uh, right. Paul Sex Rudd Panther. puts on, Sex Panther. Uh-huh. 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, if you need that to feel like a man, <laughs> what did you nothing s- will make you feel like a man. What did you say earlier? Crack and taint? <laughs> oh, dragon taint. Dragon taint. <laughs> You know, I actually heard this phrase once where um, (laughs) this guy was talking to his wife and he's like, I just like, I need you to make me feel like a man. And she said something like, well, I can't make you feel like something you're not. Oh, and honestly, that's the thing. Like, no one can make (laughs) you feel a certain way. If you're so concerned about feeling like a man, none of these items will make you feel like a man. That comes from the inside, my guys. Yeah, the bigger general principle I think you're referring to is nothing can make you feel... It can't come from outside. Right. Whatever it is, happiness, mm-hmm. it, it's got to come from within. Yeah. Self-confidence. Yeah. All right, almost done with the show. We have two things left for you. It was a leap year this year. Uh-huh. Last week, we had a February 29th. Have you ever seen, he's a British comedian, Dave Gorman. Have you ever seen his bit about the 13 month year? Oh, okay. I saw a tiny little bit of it, I think on like a TikTok or something. Okay. We'll post the link below to the full, I think seven or eight minute diatribe Uh that makes way too much sense, ladies and gentlemen. What he proposes is a year of 13 months, 28 days apiece. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you do the math in your head, you just realize, well, that's only 364 days. And you'd be right. And what he proposes for the 365th day, tack it on to the end of the year and call it intermission. Oh, (laughs) I kind of like that. And on leap years, you have a two-day intermission. What are they? Are they a weekend? Nope. Just intermission. Hmm, That's nice. Take a day or two off. You've earned it. Okay. And also, we take a day off for President's Day. But not for a leap year. Right. Like, this only happens once every four years. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we all need a damn break. We need need an intermission. So, like, yeah, why can't we, on a leap year, on leap day, just not have to go to school or work or anything? Exactly. You know, have a little bank holiday. It's an extra day. Let's take it. Right. We've banked it up over the last four years. We've somehow survived. We deserve it. We earned it. This is our our holiday time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you've seen the 30 Rock episode with Leap Day William? No, I've not. I haven't seen any any 30 Rock. Okay, wait a minute. Your show for me is what? Uh, Walking Dead. Okay. I'll watch Walking Dead if you watch 30 Rock. I'm down. That's great. We'll have a choice between a, a one-hour drama or a 30-minute sitcom. Perfect. I love that. Jim Carrey plays Leap Day William. And, oh, I love Jim Carrey. Yeah. And Alec Baldwin. It's season six, episode nine, I want to say. And Alec Baldwin says something like... <laughs> Uh, oh, he doesn't celebrate. He's Mormon. And you know how Mormons are about Leap Day. What? How are they? Is that made up? I think that's that's made made up. up. Yeah. (laughs) 
as someone who experienced many leap days as a Mormon, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. What do you mean? So this 13-month calendar of 28 days apiece actually has a couple of other cool benefits because uh -huh. 7 times 4 is 28. Right. The days of the week never change from the number. In other words, the first oh. is always a Sunday. That's nice. Yeah. That's how it should be. And as a bonus, you get 13 Friday the 13th. Oh, that's fun. Taylor there Swift got to go. get behind this. Yes. Anyway, go check out British comedian Dave Gorman. We'll uh, link at the bottom of this post. Ooh, does that mean it'll be a Gormanian calendar? He actually calls the 13 month Gormanuary. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And he should. He should take all the credit for yeah, that. Yeah, I think he gets it. Okay, we want to leave this for people who have always wondered about the Christ the King Church at the corner oh. of 17th and Woodruff. You mean the Nun Run? The Nun Run. <laughs> I called it the Ski Slope Church uh -huh. yeah. when I was a kid. Me too. And then I heard someone say the Nun Run, and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. If it's yeah. a fun pun like Nun Run. Right. You got to. Yeah. So let's call it the Nun Run Church. Well, and it is a Catholic church after all. So. It is. It is. So I always wondered when I was a kid hearing it called the Ski Slope Church, I, I thought, what would it be like to drop from the top of that building and ski all the way down it? Oh, we, that just makes my back tingle. We have something second best for you to end this show. That's just too high. <laughs> First, I want to tell you about a guy named Dave Mole. He's a skateboarder who makes extreme skateboarding videos. Okay. Then I want to tell you that there is a similar shaped church in La Cañada, Flint Ridge, California. That's why the Californians are moving here. It feels familiar. <laughs> right. So, Dave. Is that one also Catholic? It is not. It's a United Methodist Church. Oh. And in fact, I won't get to how hard it was to find this uh -huh. actual video because I too saw a TikTok and wanted to know. I did. I right. did screen captures, reverse images searches. Uh huh. Identified it as a United Methodist Church because it's got the cross and the flame logo. Oh right. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, so I but I finally found. You were it. basically a little pi. I was for about thirty minutes. I love that to bring you this clip. That's how dedicated <laughs> I am to you. And That's it's awesome. not. It's not a guy skiing. I hate to disappoint you. It's mm -hmm. not a guy skiing from the Christ the King Bummer. Church, but it is a dude skateboarding from the top of a similarly shaped ski slope roof. <laughs> nun fun run nun church fun <laughs> fun <shit>. nun run church. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's I would say equally as satisfying to watch. Uh huh. Here he is. And can I just say, I love that they're united in their love of Christ and their choice in church shape. And I don't know if they got permission. He biffs it there on the first one, tries it again. Oh, well, not wearing a helmet, by the way. What a drop. Look oh. at this guy. <laughs> and then he, he almost loses it. And then, boom, off the roof of the church, onto the sidewalk, <laughs> never falls off his skateboard. Holy cow. Also, he wasn't wearing a helmet, but at least he's got all that poofy hair to try to save his, his head <laughs> if he were to fall. I mean, that's only, what, like 60 feet in the air? What a thrill ride. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.